Bring her back, goddammit. So, you want my opinion on the top 10 best weapons, huh? Well, unfortunately, this is a tough one because every game has lots of uber powerful weapons later on. So instead, how about we talk about the top 10 most useful weapons? Of course, there are a few ground rules. For starters, glitches do not count. Weapons only. No accessories, no armors, no just fears. But weapons that get a little help from these things are fair game. Just because a weapon is overpowered doesn't mean that it's useful. By the time you get your hands on the worm heal blade, there's nothing left to kill. And finally, weapons that are only good for grinding do not count. We'll save that for another video. Anyway, let's get started. These are, in my opinion of course, the top 10 most useful weapons in Final Fantasy. Fumashuken is indeed classified as a weapon, so it counts. These things do massive physical damage to anything in the game. There's just one tiny problem. They cost too much fucking gil. Not in Final Fantasy VI. In this game, they only cost 500 gil and you can get them halfway through the game when Shadow returns. At mid-levels, this thing will do 9,000 damage. Perfect for lazy people who don't like to grind. You spoony bard! Edward sucks ass. This is the worst character ever created. His stats sucks, his weapon sucks, his special ability sucks, he's a big crybaby. When he's low on hit points, he hides like a little coward. What, what, what? What the fuck was that shit? Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? There's no way that can be right! First, you give him uber high stats past level 70, then you give him an armor that absorbs every element in the game, and now you give him an uber powerful weapon. This thing must play some horrible music. It does 9000 damage to every monster in the game except for flans and monsters that don't have a type, and you wouldn't normally physically attack flans anyway. This is useful because you're gonna make multiple trips in the Lunar Ruins. Out of all the characters in the game, Edward, why the hell did you do this? Nobody wants to use this guy. Oh, well, you said this up before, so we're going to make him really, really good this time, and then everybody's going to use it. No, 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 no. This is an awesome weapon, but I do not like Edward. What the fuck am I talking about, you ass? Well, unfortunately, this thing was bugged on the Game Boy Advance version, unless you live in Japan or Europe. But they fixed it on the PSP version. <laughs> Tifa's body is not the only reason why I use her. She has a very underrated weapon called the Power Soul. The attack power is only 28, but anytime her hit points are critical, it does double damage. That may sound meticore, but I don't think people understand how stupid this weapon really is. It also works with Death Sentence. Under Death Sentence, the damage is multiplied by 4. Hey, guess what? They stack. I know, I know, you don't want to cast Death Sentence at the start of every fight. Hey, what we got here? At this point, Tifa is the strongest attacker in the game for a very long time. With the right setup, this thing can constantly do 9,000 damage, and that's without the critical hit points or the death blow hit. Now, I know you can get some of the ultimate weapons shortly after this, but the damage from the Power Soul is consistent. And not only that, unlike the ultimate weapons, the Power Soul has double material growth. For those of you who just want to stare at the boobs, now you have a reason to. I cannot tell you how annoyed I was by all the vanilla hate when this game first came out. I really love this girl, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. The Belladonna one and the upgrades increase the rate in which she inflicts stats effects on the opponent. While that may not seem like a big deal at first, it's very, very helpful against enemies like Lone Gooey and other monsters that have high resistance against stats effects. You normally start boss fights by inflicting stats effects on the opponent, and nobody does it better than vanilla. As if her death spell wasn't broken enough. I'm tougher than you thought, huh?
He's like, oh yes, I'm about to fuck up some things. The only thing that prevented this from being number one is the simple fact that you don't get it until very late in the game. And the only place where it truly shines is the Omega Ruins. All Celestial Weapons are uber powerful and very broken, but this one has one ability that others do not have. First Strike. Combine that with Break Damage Limit and Triple Overdrive, it's impossible to lose a normal battle. Aaron is the legendary guardian after all, his job is to scout for danger while the rest do the stealing and the catching. You always want to keep on in front just in case you know who shows up. Fucking great Malbaro. Anytime two or more monsters show up that don't interest you, simply use Dragon Fane to dispatch them. Not that this is a difficult thing to do, but this weapon makes it autopilot. That's how it's done. Final Fantasy VIII has the worst weapon system in the series. I really don't see a point to upgrading your weapons in this game. They give you a few attack points and nothing more. And you won't even notice the difference. The Strange Vision does give you perfect accuracy, but you really don't need it in this game. There is one exception, however. The Lionheart. This game is already easy enough as it is, but the fact that you can get the Lionheart in this one makes it stupid. Unfortunately, it's a 1 out of 4 chance that he'll actually use it, but trust me, you will see it a lot. There are only 2 monsters in the entire game that can survive a Lionheart. Although you don't get the Excalibur until late in the game in the Great Crystal, it's very, very helpful and I don't have to spend hours trying to get one piece of loot. See that? Even in the midst of battle she's shaking her ass. She can't help it. Oh, sorry, I got off track. Pretty much everything you fight later on in the game is weak to holy. You can even give this thing to a magic based Pinello and it will still do over 9000 damage. And this is without the white robes or the bravery to pile it up even further. If you're playing the international version, for fuck's sake, use a knight for the sole purpose of using this weapon. Most blood swords are never used because they have the same two weaknesses. They have very low attack power and very low accuracy but it would seem that they made this nerf for a very good reason. My buddy S10 provided me with this video. I've never played Final Fantasy 2, so I haven't experienced it for myself, but just by reading what it does and by looking at this video, I already see how stupid this weapon really is. I also heard that you can get it pretty early in the game. In addition to doing fixed damage based on the enemy's HP, this thing is 100% accurate. What the fuck were they thinking when they created this weapon? How can you possibly lose if you do massive damage and heal all the HP every time you attack? The Emperor's gotta be tougher than this. Most of you are probably gonna say this should be number one, but I've never experienced it for myself, so I'll put it as number three. I mean, come on, seriously, what else do you need to see? Using this thing is kind of unfair. No limit breaks, no desperation moves, these are your normal attacks. You can collect this weapon halfway through the game, and even though the Lightbringer has better stat increasements, this thing is stupid for two reasons. One, it completely ignores the enemy's defense, 
and two, the damage is not reduced by the Master Scroll. You can get as many as you please for the post game. There isn't a single monster in the entire game that stands a chance against this thing. All right, it's time for the number one most useful weapon in Final Fantasy, in my opinion. But you see, we have a tie. Yes, again, we have a tie. They are both from the same game, but the weapon of choice depends on which version of the game you're playing. These two weapon monstrosities are by far the most useful. A very common and well-known trick in Final Fantasy XII is to reach certain areas long before you're supposed to. The reason for doing this is because you get overpowered equipment. You won't believe some of the things you can collect after you obtain the Dawn Shard, which is about 20% of the main game. But this one takes the cake. You just obtained the Dawn Shard and you already have access to the Zodat Spear, the strongest weapon in the game, at least in sheer brute force. This weapon makes the game even easier than it already is. I truly think that Square meant to make this weapon completely inaccessible until you reach a certain point of the game. The reason why I say this is because there's a chest in the Fine Coast that is linked to it, which is halfway through the game. And what the fuck were you thinking when you decided to make this weapon completely missable without giving us some kind of clue? Unfortunately, getting this thing in the international version is a bitch, and that's not until you get to the second part of the hand mines. But there's no need because there's an even more stupid weapon, the Zyangrid Bow. Normally this thing would be impossible to get, but now there's a fixed way to get it. It does indeed work. This thing's attack power is 224. It has very long range, 75 evasion, it does a lot of critical hits, and the fact that it's a bow means you can use elemental arrows for extra damage. But wait, there's more. You can get this thing after you escape from the Bahim Passage. We're not done yet. In addition to there being an unlimited amount, most weapons are exclusive to certain jobs, but anybody can use this thing. When I LP'd this game, the viewers thought this weapon was so broken that they told me to stop using it. If you're playing this game on your PS2, there's a fixed way to get it. It's kind of weird and confusing, but trust me, it does indeed work, and after you practice it, it's very, very easy. Unfortunately, most of you are playing this on your computer, so you're going to have to get it the hard way. Good luck with that shit. 